our speakers uh, this evening for raising the issue and for Council Scott for um, debunking some of the myths about them. Um, the purpose of this motion is to open up debate on what is a really important issue for future housing in Cambridge. And our proposal is designed to do four main things consult through the review of the local plan, improve the standards of shared houses for their tenants in the external environment. Maintain and increase the shared housing sector while for new MOs avoiding too great a uh, few sorry for new HMOs avoiding too great a concentration in the old streets, and to listen to the whole community. The first part of the motion deals with regulation. All Cambridge has a very significant level of and need for shared housing. And we believe that it is the duty of the council to ensure that now many thousands of residents who live in shared houses and those that live in their neighbourhoods are protected from lazy or unscrupulous landlords. The problems of poorly managed HMOs can range from the dangerous, arising from non compliance with safety standards, and let us not forget the death of Cambridge resident last year, to the uncomfortable with poor quality accommodation, to the inconvenient with shop facilities for tenants. For those living close to poorly managed properties, they can suffer from inconsiderate labour of noise, unkempt buildings or gardens, refuse or recycling can be properly handled. Currently, only those properties that are three or more stories in height and have five or more unrelated persons in them need to be licensed and therefore regulated by the council. In Cambridge, that means that very many shared houses fall outside the statutory definition and are entirely unregulated. We are proposing that a report be brought forward examining the implications of extending licensing to shared houses of three or more unrelated individuals and getting rid of the arbitrary and unhelpful requirement for the building to be for a set number of stories. Now, we don't know at this stage whether looking at that new definition we would get the balance right, which is why we want to report. Evidence from improvements suggests that such a definition may be right. In Oxford, this extension to licensing in these terms was supported by both the Liberal Democrats and the Greens, as well as the Student Union, and is said to be working well. With some lads more than others complaining, but most reputable ones, welcoming the changes to basic standards, avoiding the rest of the bottom on standards and ensuring that the less responsible landlords get their act together or get out of the market. The suggestion is that the, those landlords aren't getting out of the market. Um, dire predictions of a decline in stock have not been realised. As apart from anything else, the economics of the marketplace mean that a landlord is going to be able to charge a greater rent for a shared house than for a property that is a family home, and is therefore going to be likely to improve their standards where necessary and adhere to their responsibilities. The response from tenants has been unsurprisingly positive. All this, however, is anecdotal, and we would like to see that evidence brought forward to confirm or otherwise those conclusions. The second link to regulation is, of course, increased expectations and, where necessary, enforcement, and that has to be a vital component of any change. Once irresponsible landlords understand that Cambridge demands safe, good quality, and well known properties for both tenants and their neighbours, then we can realistically hope to see an end to poorly managed and unsafe houses. The last part of the motion relates to planning, and as the part appears to have led to a degree of willful or innocent mm -hmm. misunderstanding in some quarters. The current local plan produced by the ruling group refers to HMOs and says that development will be permitted, be permitted subject to the potential <coughs> impact on the immunity of the local area, and goes on to state that such properties, quote, are residential in character but often have different services needs and increased levels of activity associated with them. The location of such provision requires careful consideration to ensure that the proposals respect the character and residential immunity of the local area. An over-concentration of uses which can affect immunity and character can have a detrimental impact on a locality. Close quotes. That's for the local plan. The ruling group have therefore acknowledged the problem of an over-concentration of HMOs on a locality, but have chosen to do nothing about it beyond some empty words in the local plan, but no rule policy, no research, no evidence, and no action. As part of the review of the local plan, we are asking the head of planning to report to the executive council responsible on the option of using planning powers to prevent or to, to create a trigger to look at new HMOs in a, in a street or stretch of street where there are 25% and to put that out to consultation as part of the issues and options stage of the <laughs> plan. This, as has been made clear, does, does not affect existing HMOs. What we are looking for is an appropriate trigger for intervention. There is none in the current local plan, in spite of the plan suggesting logically that there should be. Is 25% the right trigger? I don't know. We don't know. We want to do 
debate and some research, but a rational, mature debate about what the right figure is. We have not made a figure in our manifesto for this reason. The total number of shared houses is well under 25% of the housing sector. In some streets in Cambridge, it is nil or nearly nil. But we believe there are some streets where it is already near 90% and others on the way to that level. That would be in clear contravention of the local plan if the centre of the had been translated into actual policy. This is only one of many policy elements in tackling housing issues and improving private sector housing and latest policies for Cambridge, but it is an area that has been ignored by the Liberal Democrat ruling group for too long. In context, Cambridge is a city with a huge number of students, professionals, workers, and all clients who rely on shared housing. And that means not going to diminish. HMOs are a vital part of the housing sector, but they are not the only part, and it is the duty of the council to seek a balance between the different parts of the housing sector. Otherwise, communities will not be sustainable. With unacceptable pressure on parking, the possibility of cold streets emptying out for parts of the year, and families finding themselves squeezed out of the rental market due to the higher yield on HMOs. We want new shared houses, but we can use planning powers to ensure that they are spread further and do not lead to or worsen over concentration. So we are not proposing a cut in the number of HMOs, nor are we proposing any form of moratorium, but we do want to look at preventing areas being overly dominated by HMOs. The idea that this is a strange or unwarranted interference by the council is unfounded. Planning and seeking to plan and build communities is one of the most important functions of the council. We do not leave planning issues exclusively to the free market. We regulate and manage our fields and open spaces while we're allowing the vaccine to for developers. And look at the effort that is going into new communities like the Southern Fringe to ensure that we get the right mix. Integrated communities, better quality of social housing, high quality environmental standards. So why isn't that good enough for shared housing? We impose ratios in commercial areas to regulate the numbers of shops to restaurants, for example, to ensure a balanced high street. And this proposal is analogous to that. Some have expressed the fear that such a policy will drive up prices and decrease the supply of HMOs. We don't see that it will, but we will see the evidence. We are talking about new HMOs, and these often come on the market having been bought by investors. And we are not saying that they shouldn't. What we are saying is it might be appropriate in some circumstances to say to an investor, you need to buy from a different part of the city. There is a huge pressure on housing. We have a duty to all the residents of Cambridge to seek to manage that for all of them. And this motion asks for a report to look at whether we ought to use the planning system to regulate the number of shared houses in a street or area. If such regulation is appropriate, we don't know at this stage if it should be city-wide or applicable to certain areas, and that is something the report can look at. We do not think, however, we should be afraid to look at using the tools available to us to plan for a well-balanced city 